So hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss a new topic that is functions and recursion. In the previous video, we have discussed about the concept of pointers which help us to store address of another variables. If you have not watched that video, I would request you to see that video first before coming to this video because in this video, we are going to discuss a topic called calling functions by address where we have to use the concept of pointers for using that, for learning that, okay? So I would recommend you to watch that video to have a concept of pointer first before coming to this video. So let's begin this video. Today we are going to discuss about functions and recursions. So what are functions in C? So what are functions? C. What are functions? Functions is a set of code. Okay. That performs specific operations. Okay. As clear as that. Functions are set of code that performs specific operations. Okay, now if you ask me what is the example of few functions, I will say that example of function is the main functions that the user defines, right? We write the int main in our program, right? And how does the int main help us? Int main help us to do our program or tells the compiler that this is the entry point of the program, right? So you can write here that entry point of execution of program right then we also have the example of the scanf we also have the ex example of the printf so what does scanf help us scanf helps us to accept inputs so helps us in accepting input from the user right and we also have the printf which help us to print output on the screen right so they all consist of a set of code the main consists of a set of code which we can see the scanf and printf also consist of set of codes but we cannot see it okay there are different type of functions which we will see here so they, what are functions functions are set of code that performs specific operations clear now let's see what are the type of functions that are available in C or any other programming languages? See, we have two types of functions. One is the predefined function and other one is the user defined functions. Okay. Now, what are the types of functions and on the basis of what category it is, dis it is divided? See, it is on the type of definition, whether it is predefined or whether it is user defined. What are predefined functions? Let's discuss it first. Now see, predefined functions are called predefined because they are already defined in the C library and the user cannot edit the code. Right? And for using this type of predefined functions, we need to import their respective header files. Okay? Now why we need to import a header file? Let's understand this first. Now, what is a library? If you consider in a real world scenario, what is a library? This is a library. Say, I assume that this is a library and library consists of many, you can call showcases or you can say cupboards. Okay. Or many boxes where books are kept. Okay. Support this box one consists of books on science. Okay. Box two consists of books on the topic of history the third box consists on the topic of geography okay and the last box consists of you can say stories story books okay this is box two box three box four okay now suppose in case we want a book of history so where will i go i will go to the library first okay and I will select the history box that is box 2 and then I will search my book on the topic I want to read. Similarly, in C also, in the C programming language, we also have libraries. Okay. Now, what does the library consist of? This library is a big place. Let's talk about the C library. This is the C library. Okay. The C library consists of big place and it consists of files which are called the header files okay suppose they have 
header files this is the two header files okay so if you want to write over here this is the c library i am writing lib in short and this is the header file okay uh, this is the header file you can say h file okay. this is also a header file okay now what does this header file consist of this header file consists of predefined functions for example this function uh, this header file consists of one function this header file consists of one function this header file and this header file consists of respective functions now what does this function help us to do this functions help us to perform operations such as the scanf which is an example of predefined functions help us to accept input printf help us to print output there is also other say sqrt and abs which help us to perform mathematical operations so to use these things use this predefined function what do we do we include the respective header file we already know the respective header file of scanf and printf that is what is the header file for scanf and printf it is std io dot h okay so in the c library also there is a header file you will find the header file in the c library which is a very big place and if see this is the c library there is a header file called std io dot h and what does this header file consist of this header file consist of scanf code code of scanf function and also of printf code of printf functions okay now when you have to use this scanf and printf what do we do we write at the beginning of the program that hash include std io dot h so what does the compiler understand by this hash is the preprocessor directive we already know what is the meaning of this include means to import that is to import this header file that is to search in this header file for this scanf and printf if we don't have this header file the compiler won't understand where is this function present so to tell the compiler that the function is present over here that is in scanf or in printf we have to include this header file that is stdio.h and this is the other other files other functions or predefined function that is the sqrt and abs and the header file for it is math.h okay because they help us to calculate mathematical functions so there is another header file that is math.h so what does sqrt help us to do sqrt only from the name only you can understand it is help us in square root square root of a number can be performed using this sqrt function okay now there is also a function that is absolute abs absolute so what does the function help us the function help us to return only positive numbers if we enter any negative number to this abs function we will get the positive output of that function okay next comes a new type that is user defined function so what was predefined function predefined function is already developed or already predefined in the c library and it is stored in the respective header file and who made that pre uh, predefined files or functions these predefined functions were made by the developers who made the c language so they designed the code of scanf and printf and they kept it in the stdio.h header file and for using them you have to import the respective header files clear so this was about the predefined function and the user or the v cannot edit or see the code of scanf and printf okay because they are predefined now there comes another type of function that is user defined functions so what are user defined function the user defined function are the type of functions that can be defined by the user that can be defined by the user in his own code if you ask for an example biggest example and the best example is the main function because the user can define the main function also and the user can also edit the main function also can we edit the code of scanf no because we can't see the code of scanf can we edit the main yes we can edit right whether to add two numbers whether to subtract two numbers we can change the main function that the code is present in the main function we can alter that and make up our operations perform accordingly so the best example of user defined function is the main functions okay 
Now I am talking about function 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 from the beginning of today's lecture. Let's see or have a look about the different types of functions. So let's see what are the type of function or the parts of function. So we will now see about the parts of a user defined functions. Okay. So generally, generally the user defined functions Now we are going to see the parts of user defined functions. Okay, what are the uh, types of or the parts of a user defined function? The user defined function consists of a return type. So let's change my ink color. User defined function generally consists of a return type. They consist of a function name. They consist of parameter and they may also consist of function body. Okay, let's understand what is return type now. Now see, let's read over here. A function may return a value the return type is the data type of the value that the function returns okay now what is return type see here suppose i have a function to add two numbers we know that function is a set of code to perform operations right adding is operation now suppose i design a function for adding two numbers so what does will the function return if i give the function two numbers of add to add the two numbers what will the product uh, function return the function will return with a sum as output so if sum is of integer type the return type of the function will be same as the sum because the sum is being returned so if the sum is of integer type the return type of the function will also of integer type see here the function may return a value the return type is the data type of the value that the function is returning now, since the function was returning the sum of two numbers and it was of integer data type, so the return type of the function will be int. Okay. Now, it may also happen that some functions are performing desired operation. Okay. But they are not returning any value. We will see. We will see that there may be a fun functions which are performing desired operation, but they are not returning any value. And such type of function has a return type which is called void. That is null. That means they don't return any value okay but they are performing operation but they are not returning any value so that type of function has a return type called null or you can say void okay now after the return type every user defined function consists of a function name so the function name is the name which is given to the particular function just now i have told you that i have a function called add so add was the name of the function okay it is just like the variable name next we are going to see the parameters so functions also consist of parameters so what are parameters see if you read this definition when function is invoked or you can say called also what does mean call or invoke call or invoke means to make the function take effect or to make the function action properly okay so when a function is called or invoked for getting operated or for getting executed you can write over here for getting i'm oh, sorry uh, for getting executed okay we pass values to the function okay we pass values to the function and where do we provide the values we provide value to the parameter okay and this value is referred to as a parameter and you can also call it as argument okay so if i have a function say add okay so what are the parameters we are going to provide the effort to the function so if i have a function called add we are going to provide the parameters of two numbers that is to be added right because without the two numbers without getting two numbers what will be the function or add right so to add two numbers and if i have a function called add so what we have to provide as parameters we have to provide the numbers which are to be added in the parameter list so if you read this definition again let's see when a function is invoked or called for getting executed we pass values to the parameter and this type of value is called argument now see 
parameters and argument whatever you call it there are of two types there are formal parameter also and there is actual parameters we will see what is formal parameters and actual parameters okay now see parameters are also optional they are not compulsory okay we will see when functional parameters are optional if you ask for an example of function where is uh, where the argument or the parameter is optional i can give you the best example that is a main function do we have any parameter no we don't have any parameter on the main function now once i explain parameter to you where the parameters are present you will very well understand which i am talking about okay after that we have the function body which refers to the code inside the function now this is compulsory because every function will perform few operation which will be represented in the form of a code and that code is present in the function body okay now let's see the basic structure of a user defined function so what is this int this int is called let's change the color of the ink to green so that it is much more visible so what is this int int is the return type okay why int that i will that i will also explain wait for some time what is this add add is the function name i'm writing fn name okay now what is this int a and int b int a and int b are called the formal parameters okay they are the formal parameters so let's group this together int a and int b are called the formal parameter all right okay and this first line where you write the return type the function name and the parameters this line is called the definition of a function that is we are defining a function all right then after defining in brace there is this brace and this brace we are defining the code and this part is called this part is called the function body okay so we have seen the return type we have seen the function name we have seen the formal parameter and also the function body now in the function body there is int sum equal to a plus b very good that means this a and this b int a and int b are getting added and being stored in the variable called sum and what we are returning in the return statement we are returning sum that is we are returning the sum as output of the function okay now see what is the data type of the thing that we are returning we are returning sum and what is the data type of the sum data type of sum is int if you see over here so what will be the return type of the function that is int why because the data type of sum is integer type so like this just a minute yeah clear about this thing next comes the int main now in the int main you can see here this there is a line called int c equal to add x int x comma int y now what is this int x and int y this int x and int y is called actual parameter all right this int x and int b are called actual parameter we have learned that function uh, parameters are of two types that is x formal parameter and actual parameter so this int x and int y are called the actual parameter okay and this line that is int c equal to add int x comma int y this line is called the function call that is we are calling the function add okay this is called the function call now what is in c storing over here in c is storing the return value of the function being called what is the function being called the function being called is add so what is add returning add is returning sum i'm sorry add is returning this sum and where is the sum stored sum is being stored in this in c in the main all right so this entire line is called the function call okay so if someone ask you what is actual parameter you will say the parameters which are present 
in the function call statement is called the actual parameter okay and if someone asks you what is formal parameter so you will say that the parameters which are present in the function definition line it is called the formal parameter okay now let's see how the compiler executes the functions or how the function is being executed by the compiler so let's start from the main because the compiler starts the program execution from the int main right so this is the int main very good in the int main suppose i have int x equal to 3 and int y equal to 4 very good now the compiler finds that in the next line there is int c so in int c there is add int x comma int y so what is this add the compiler will search for add okay now once it find the parenthesis the compiler will understand that yes this is a function right on seeing the add parenthesis the compiler will understand that add is a function so the compiler will start for add function so from here it will go to this line that is the add function okay now once the compiler gets into this add function what will happen the value of this actual parameter will be copied to the value of formal parameters that means a will get a will get the value of x and b will get the value of y why because a comes first and here also x comes first and b comes second and so here also b comes uh, y comes second so a will get the value of x and b will get the value of y now once the formal parameters are getting the values then the add function will be executed and that function sum will be found that is it will say sum equal to 4 plus 3 that gives you 7 and after that return sum now on encountering the return statement the function terminate uh, function execution terminates and what is returned sum is returned and where is the sum stored sum is stored in c because from this portion after the return statement is encountered from here the compiler will go come back to this in c and it will store the return value so what is the value of c now value of c is now 7 okay now let's understand a different thing that is calling functions okay what is why do we call function we have seen that here there is function call and now we are going to see function calling in detail so why do we call function see here to use a function in our program we have to call that function to perform defined task in the previous slide we have seen that we are calling the function call add to add two numbers here we have to say that to make the function operate properly we have to call the function to perform our defined task okay now when a function or when a program calls a function the program control is transferred to the called function we have seen that when this line was when this line was calling the function add the control went from this add from this main function to the int add function right so let's read again so when a function is called the program control is transferred to the called function right then the called function executes a defined task we have seen that the addition was being calculated and after that when it is returning the statement or when the return statement is executed or when the function ending closing brace is found for the function which do not return any value there is directly the brace close right it returns the program control back to the main program to the line from where the control was shifted right so after the function execution ends we come back to the main function as we seen over here that is on encountering the return we came back to the main function right that is from here to here so that only it is said over here when a call function performs a defined task and when its return statement is reached or executed or executed return statement are reached or executed or when the function ending is encountered the program control come back to the main program from where it was stopped okay now see to call a function what do we do to call a function we simply need to pass the required parameters that is for adding to numbers or 
for calling to function calling the function add in the previous slide what did we do we call write the function name and we sent the parameters that was the int x and int y that is the numbers to be added right along with the function name and if function returns a value then you can store the return value all right that we have seen we have stored a return value in in c over here that is this one and this was the function call these were the parameters right that only it is said here to call a function we simply need to pass the required parameters along with the function name and if the function returns any value you can store return value now this function calling is of two types in c in c the function calling is of two types okay first type is calling by value and the other type is calling by address okay now let's understand what is calling function by value so calling functions by value can be also be known to someone as pass by value pass by value and some people may also know it as uh, you can say call by address a uh, call by value i'm sorry call by value whichever you like it you may call it that way so calling function by value also called pass by value or call by value so how can calling function by value be demonstrated so let's see so this is a function call if you consider this example in c equal to add and here in the this are the parameters so this is a function call this is a function call right and what is this int m and int n i have mentioned that if the parameter present in the function call then it is called the actual parameter actual parameter okay so it is the actual parameter which is present in the function call and there may be a function called add which i have not written over here int add and there some parameter is present that is called the formal parameter so this parameter is called the formal parameter correct the parameter which is present in the function definition is called the formal parameter and the parameter which is present in the function call is called the actual parameter okay so here i have written int m and int n are called the actual parameter and add is the function name that is this one and this is add defined okay so what happens in the above statement is we call the respective function by sending the value of actual parameter to the formal parameter right we understood this that how what we are doing we are sending the value of m and m to here the parameters that was int x and y in that case right so if here i have write if here i have written that int add function okay int add function and here there was int a comma int b okay so this was the actual parameter and this was the formal parameter now what i am doing in this line is that we are calling the function by value so what happens in this above line the value of int a and n gets copied to a and b so n value get copied to a because it is defined first and here also a is defined first and here the n value get copied to b because n is coming second and here b is also coming second so suppose m was 5 so a will also be equal to 5 so if m was uh, 5 a will also become 5 and if n was 10 b will also be 10 after the function call okay so what happens in the above statement we call the respective function by sending only the value of actual parameter to formal parameter okay and here we will see that the formal in any changes to the formal parameter is not reflected in actual parameter okay now why this happens because because we are sending value over here uh, value of actual parameter to formal parameter right we are not uh, sending the address that if the address is the change of 
something in the address happen then the address uh, value or change is reflected right but we are doing we are only changing the value uh, we are only sending the value to the formal parameter we are only sending the value 5 to the formal parameter in this case so any change in the formal parameter is not reflected in the actual parameter let's understand this in a better way by seeing an example in the next page see here here i have demonstrated call by value okay so here i have a function called int add here i have two formal parameters that is int a and int b and they are the formal parameter i'm writing formal para okay same thing meaning and here it is written int and here it is written a equal to a plus b if you can see over here okay here i have a equal to a plus b then i have printf percentage d and i am printing the value of a and b after that there is a main function there is declaration of c and d that is 5 and 10 and there is a function call call add c and d and i am this is the actual parameter this c and d that is this one this two are called the actual parameter because why they are present in the function call okay now let's run this code manually so if i am the compiler let's start this execution of this code so from where does the execution start the execution always starts from the int main so from the main after that in c equal to 5 so in the memory space will be allocated for the variable c of integer type so if this is c and 5 will be allocated for that okay what is the sp space of c that is 4 byte okay so space is allocated for c and there is also int d equal to 10 so space will be allocated for d and this is 10 in the ram in the memory right the compiler will allocate after that the compiler finds add and then parenthesis so what will the compiler understand that add is a function so compiler starts searching for this function and when it finds the function that is int add it creates a link between these two okay compiler goes at the all the control of execution goes from this statement to this int add function right now the compiler finds the two parameters that is c and d over here and what will happen the value of c and d will be copied to int a and int b so if c and d was here its value will get copied to a and b right so if space is allocated in the ram same thing you can do over here after getting reading this line compiler will allocate space for a and b right so space for a and this is space for b and compiler will allocate the spaces right and what will the values this value will be provided by the actual parameter right so c will a will get the value of c so it will be 5 a will get the value of c that is 5 and d will get the value of d that is 10 all right so both a and b have the value now so what i am doing over here a equal to a plus b so what will that do a will be equal to a plus b so a plus b will give me 15 and after that a's value will become 15 after the execution of this line by the compiler very good now there is a line called printf percentage d percentage d a comma b so what will the output when the count, uh, compiler encounters this printf the compiler will print output obviously so if this is my output screen the compiler will print on the output screen the value of a and b so what is the value of a now value of a is 15 and value of b is 10 very good now there is a ending brace after this ending brace is encountered the execution will come back to the line after the int add function call now after this add there is printf percentage d and we are printing the value of c and d so what is the value of c and d now so if you see this one is the value of c changed is the value of c changed no is the value of d changed no right is the value of actual parameters changed no it is not changed only the value is copied to the formal parameter the value is not changed initial value is not changed right so after after that it will print the value of c that was 5 and 10 right 
see here that the value of actual parameters will not be altered if there is any change in the formal parameters right what the change we are doing in the formal parameters we are altering the value of a that is a equal to a plus b a becomes 15 15 is getting printed but it is not reflected in c c is remaining 5 right so we can see that in call by value any change in the any change in the formal parameter is not reflected very important not reflected in the actual parameter understood the thing so this was calling function by value now we will see calling function by address this is the new type of calling functions so let's see what does this calling function by address says to us okay so calling functions by address can be demonstrated in the following way for example i have a function call over here in c equal to add m percent m and m percent n so what are m percent m and m percent n again i am writing over here they are the actual parameter okay now what this m percent are doing m percent means to send address so with the help of this m percent with the m percent sends sends address so with the help of n percent we can send address to someone who is that someone we will see now so let's read this okay here int m and int n are called actual parameters i have written over here okay and add is the function name very good in the above statement we call the respective function that is add by sending the address of actual parameters to the formal parameters so if i have a function called add over here i'm writing with white color if i have a function called int add over here here i have some formal parameter okay so what will the formal parameter receive over here what will this formal parameter receive formal parameter will receive the address formal parameter will receive the address of this m and m right so and the formal parameter consists of pointers why pointers because how we store address we store address with the help of pointers right so once we are sending the address of m, per, uh, m and m using this ampersand right this ampersand is used to send the address who will receive the address this address will be received and stored by some pointers in the add function which is present in the formal parameter so in the formal parameter we will have pointers to store address that is in pa you can say and also in star eb that is the pointer for a and b okay so what is pa getting so star pa the pointer pa is getting address of m and star pb or pointer b is getting address of n okay now since we are sending the address of m and n here to the formal parameters so any change to the formal parameter any changes to the formal parameter is reflected very important okay is reflected in the actual parameter now in the previous thing we have seen that any change to the formal parameter is not reflected in the actual parameter but in this case any change to the formal parameter is reflected in the actual parameter as why because we are sending the address in this case right we are addressing sending the address in this case and who is receiving the address the pointer is receiving the address so any changes to the formal parameter is reflected in the actual parameter let's see an example see i have demonstrated the call by address so let's just execute it directly suppose i am the compiler let's run this okay compiler starts execution from int main very good so there is a block called m memory will be stored or allocated for m okay what will the value stored 10 is stored and there is also another line after that there is n space created for n in the ram 20 is allocated in that okay very good then i am printing the value of m and n so let's print the value of m and n 
if this is my output screen so value of a and n will be printed so what are the value of a and n that is 10 and is 20 pretty good so this line also executed this line also executed this line also executed after this we are calling the function called fun that is this one and we are sending the address of m and n by using the ampersand so who will receive it the pointers here we will receive it so from here the execution shifts to this line shifts to this function fun because this function is called so this function receives the address of this one so the compiler reads this and allocates space for this pointers too so it will be ptra over here and space will be accumulated for that and ptr d and space will be created for that very good now suppose this m had an address of 100 and n has a address of 100 so what will be this ptra storing ptra will store 100 and and suppose this n was 200 okay and ptr b will be storing 200 very good so we are sending the address and the pointers are storing the address now see what i am doing i am dereferencing the pointer okay i am dereferencing the pointer and i'm doing it 20 25 so what happens 25 is being stored in the memory which has the address of 100 so what happens is this ptr a is storing 100 so if i do star ptr a i'm doing it over here that is star ptr a if i do bracket over here that means it becomes star 100 that is star 100 right and what is the 100 location storing 100 location is storing the value of 10 that is this one and what will 10's value change to so 10's value will change to now 25 because we are doing it using pointers okay similarly for b when we write star b over here star ptr b what happens is if you bracket it it will become star of 200 that is the 100 200 so what will be happening happening in star 200 in star 200 30 will be allocated so where is star 200 star 200 is this one so at this location 30 will be allocated right and so this line is also executed this line is also executed after that there is brace closing okay very good brace is closing after the brace is closing the control will return back to the function call line after the function call line that is to here in the printf statement again in the main after that we are printing again the value of m and n so what will the value of m and n now so value of m will be now 25 and value of n will be now 30 now see that instead of returning any value this function is able to perform its work and it is able to change the numbers of m and n why it is happening because we are sending the address in this case we are not sending the value now we are not copying the value now what we are doing we are sending the address now once you send the address the address value or the value which is stored in the address can be altered okay so this was about call by address now let's see in our vs code by demonstrating few problems so what are the problems let's see these are the problems see the problem solving says add two numbers using functions by sending the parameters both by value and address so first we will design the function and we will send the value by address and after that we will send or uh, first we will send the value by uh, or parameters by value and next we will send the parameters by address so let's go to vs code and do this so we are in our vs code now so what we will do we will define our function and let's name it as add so after this studio.h and outside this main we will write int add very good inside the add i will do int sum equal to a plus b and what we will return we will return we will return this sum 
very good now i have to receive the value of a and b as parameters because we have to add these two numbers that is a and b so let's receive the address uh, value i'm sorry int a comma int b so we are receiving the value of int a and b very good so our add function is defined right now we have to do the main function so in the main function we will have int m equal to 10 and we will have int n equal to 20 i'm sorry 20 all right now what we will do we will call the function add and we will store the return value in some other variable so let's write int c equal to add and here we are calling the function add and we will send the values of m and n so i will write m comma n so what will happen m's value will be received by a and n's value will be received by 20 i'm uh, sorry it will receive by b after that the value that is the return sum is stored in c and what we will do over here we will print as the value of c print a percentage d and comma value of c that is c and our code is done so what is the output we are expected to get we are expected to get 30 let's see so we are getting 30 as output all right so this was the example of call by value where we are sending the values that is 20 and 10 to a and b we are not sending the address of a and n we are sending the value of a and n now what we will do we will uh, do the same thing that is adding these two numbers by sending the address of a and n so in this case what we will do we will just write m percent n and m percent n over here and we will make this int a and int b pointers that is star a and star b and over here also we will write star a and star b so a and b are pointers we are dereferentiating it and we are adding it so let's separate this by brackets all right very good so let's run this code and let's see if it's working properly or not So see here we are getting 30 again. So let's change this value now. This time it will be uh, say 40. 40 and 20 will give me 60. So I am expecting 60 to be printed as output. So see 60 is coming. Same. So this was the example of call by address where we are adding two numbers by sending the address of m and n. All right. We are sending the address using m percent m and m percent n and a and b are pointers okay who are receiving it and performing operations so this was the example of call by address and call by value where we are adding two numbers so this was our question number one which we have solved it so let's take this out very good now the question two says swap two numbers using functions what we have to do we have to swap two numbers using functions okay now since we are swapping two numbers we have to do this by address call by address because we have to print the same numbers again all right so let's go to vs code so we are in our vs code and we will do nothing we will uh, delete this functions okay let's delete everything okay and we will write a function called void swap why void now because the function will not return anything because we will do this by address very good and here let's define the two variables that is int a equal to 10 and int uh, b equal to 20 okay now i'll write a printf here printf before swap we'll print the value before swap <coughs> and we will print the value after swap also so before swap percentage d so before swap a equal to percentage d and b equal to percentage b so this will print the value of a and b before swap okay now i will call the function swap so after this will call the function swap and what we will do we will send the address of a comma address of b okay now after the swapping function is called we will again print f the value of swap 
so it will write here after swap value of a and value of b now what we will do in the void swap is that we will receive the address using pointer so int it will be int star ptr a pointer to a and also int star ptr b that is pointer to b now what we will do we will swap with the help of third variable let be int temp equal to we know the algorithm for swapping that is in temp equal to percentage ptr a so next will be star ptr a equal to star ptr b after that star ptr b equal to temp and swapping is done and our program is also done so let's run this code so before swap a is 10 and b is 20 and after swap a is expected to be 20 and b is expected to be 10 so let's see so see here before swap a is 10 and b is 20 and after swap a is 20 b is 10 so swapping is being successfully done using call by address so let's do this to next line so the output comes much more in a better way so let's do the a to 70 now and let b's value be uh, 90 after swap a will be 90 and b will be 70 let's see so see here before swap a is 70 b is 90 and after swap a is 10 and b is 70 okay so this was swapping two numbers using call by address and using functions okay so this was our question number two let's see question number three now question number three says design a program to add or subtract two numbers as per user choice using functions okay so what we have to do here is we will go to VS code now we have to design two functions to add and subtract two numbers so let's be int add and it will receive the two numbers say int a and int b i am doing it with uh, all by value only okay and we will write here int difference equal to a minus b and what we will return we will return this that is the difference i'm sorry it will be subtract uh, s u b t r a c t okay because since we are doing the difference it will be int subtract then i will write int add okay and it will also receive int a comma int b okay and what we will do over here is we will do nothing we will write int sum equal to a plus b and we will return sum all right now in the main what we will do is very simple we will change this a and b to m and n and what we will do is we will call the functions so how to call the functions let's see now see we have to see the questions now over here in the question it is mentioned that see here add or subtract two numbers as per user's choice now whether the numbers will be added or subtracted that will depend upon the user's choice so to implement that i have to run a if else statement so i will write over here print it enter 1 to add and 2 to subtract ok so this will ask for the user choice so let's declare any other variable say chyc equal to 0 ok now we will accept the value of choice from the user so we will write scanf ok percentage d ok and over here ampersand chyc so this will accept the choice from the user now if choice equal to equal to one then what we will do we will call the function sum so let's write here printf directly printf uh, sum is percentage d and what we are doing here is we will call the function add so add and we will send the parameters that is in comma n all right the sum which is returned will be printed directly instead of storing i am printing directly 
so I'm doing here if another condition choice equal to equal to 2 then we are calling the diff function so I will write here printf so you are writing diffrenc -E difference is percentage d comma writing here diff I'm sorry here diff which is a function and I'm sending the parameter that is m and n and this is by value all right so this was our code so let's see if it's running properly or not so if there is addition the value of 70 plus 90 let's see what we are getting we will first implement addition so it is showing our error over here so it is showing uh, implicit declaration of function so let's see why implicit declaration okay so our function name was subtract and we wrote here diff so that's a mistake over here so we'll write over here subtract s u b t r a c t so for that it was coming a error all right so let's run it again so here it is asking us enter 1 to add and 2 to subtract so if we press 1 it will be added so sum is 160 the sum of 1790 is 160 and it is being printed so let's implement the subtraction now and let's run the code again so we will now press 2 to subtract 70 and 90 so answer will be minus 20 that is difference clear so in this way we implement function for adding and subtracting as per the user's choice so if choice is one sum is being added function is being called where it is being added and if choice is two difference is being found that is in the subtract function so in this way we implement the function calling in our program okay so this was all about our function part okay now we will see a new thing that is recursions okay let's see what is recursions now we will see about recursive functions okay what are recursive functions let's read the definition then only we can understand see here function which calls itself and get executed multiple number of time is called recursive function okay now if we have a function call okay within the same function the function is calling itself so that function is called a recursive function okay so here it is written c programming language support recursive function that is a function to call itself but while using recursion see here this is important okay while using recursion we need to be careful to define the exit condition or the stopping condition from the function call because otherwise it will go to an infinite loop and what will happen in the end i'm saying you know, it will stack overflow now what is stack overflow don't ask me right now you will understand this thing when we will see data structures at that time we will see that is in the memory there is stack and heap okay there is two parts in the memory that is stack and heap so in that stack and heap there will be stack overflow if there is recursive function being called repeatedly all right so what is recursion the function which calls itself repeated number of time is called recursive functions okay and in c programming languages we have, it can support recursive function okay but while using recursion we need to mention a stopping condition or you can say the exit condition why because if exit condition is not present it will it will work like an infinite loop and at the end what will happen stack overflow will happen okay what is stack overflow we will see in the data structures okay now there may be an obvious question that why do we need recursive function now recursive function can be very essential or be very helpful when we solve many mathematical operations such as calculating factorial of number also by generating fibonacci series and others okay so this was about the recursive functions okay 
Now let's see the example of recursive function. Now we will see the example of recursive function. Now see here. Suppose I am the compiler. So this is the compiler starting execution point. That is from int main. Okay. And here I am calling the recursive function. So from here the execution will go to this recursive function. And here. Right. So function call is going over there. Recursive function starts executing. And it is again calling itself that is recursive function. So from here again it will execute. Find this one. Again it will go here. From here it will go again to this one. Now see, since there is no stopping condition over here, this function is executing multiple number of times, right? See from here it is getting here. Then again from here again this a cyclic process is being produced over here. So for this. Uh, infinity loop type of is happening over here because there is no stopping condition present over here right so for this is an example of stack overflow okay the so stack overflow may happen or will happen in this case because there is no stopping condition in this recursive function right so this is an example of recursion okay now let's see few problems or you can say to demonstration of recursion so what we will do we will print 10 5 times using without using loops okay without using loops and using recursion we are going to print 10 5 times let's go to vs code so we are in our vs code we will erase everything and let's write the main function and we will call a function just see here so what we will do we will call a function so let the function name be of say void rcur siui recursion and it will not return anything and it will not receive any parameters also so let's define a condition over here if that is a stopping condition if c equal to equal to 5 or you can say c less than equal to 5 then only you will call the void function recursion okay then only we call the void function recursion else else what it will do it will do nothing or we don't even need a else okay and what we are doing we will print that is c in c equal to 1 and we will print pri into printf c percentage d and we will print c now c will be 10 i am sorry okay and since i have defined c over here let it be to any other count let's make it count so this will count number of times 10 is being printed so i will initialize count to 1 okay and what will I do is I will increment count. Okay, so count plus plus. Program is done. Let's see how it's working. So what will happen? Uh, so in the int main, I have to call this function called recursion. So recursion. Okay, and no parameters required. So what will happen from the int main recursion function will be called c will be defined 10 count equal to 1 but here what we have to do is we cannot keep count over here because count will be initialized repeatedly right so for that what we will do we will remove this in the global part i am writing over here int count equal to 1 very good now once you define count equal to 1 over here, this count 1 acts as a global variable and this variable will be accessed or it will be found everywhere in the program. Okay. So what will happen? Count is initialized, void regression is encountered, c equal to 10 and we are printing the value of c. Okay. Now count plus plus is incrementing that it is counting number of times 10 is being printed and once it becomes 
greater uh, once it become greater than 5 the program will return okay means terminate okay let's run this code now let's run this code and we are sending a uh, that error over here that is semicolon error so let's do that okay So see now our 10 is being printed 5 times. Why? Because see here, the count is being incremented. So if count is less than 5, then only recursion is called. 10 is again printed, count is incrementing by plus 1. If it is less than 5, recursion is being called, 10 is printed, and like this it is being executed repeatedly using recursion. Right? And this is the example of you can say recursive function where we are printing 10 5 times without using loop and using the concept of recursion we are printing this so this was all about recursion understanding okay so let's go to the next thing what we have is we will solve these programs using recursion so what is the first program we will print 1 to 10 using recursion very easy let's go to code so do the thing we will print 1 to 10 using recursion very good. So in the int pan we will change nothing. Here what we will do is we will print 1 to 10. So I will change this count to 10. Okay. Then what will I do? Print f. I will print f the value of count. Okay. And then what will I do? I will increment the value of count. Very good. So count was 1, count 1 was getting printed, after that in the new line, plus plus that means count becomes 2 and count is less than equal to 10, after that count is again being a recursion function is again being called 2 is getting printed and like this there is a printing. Let's run this code. So we can see that 1 to 10 is being printed and it is without being loops and it is printed using the concept of recursion. Okay, that is recursive function. Okay, the main functions remain intact, and we are doing this by using the concept of recursion. Okay, done. Let's see the next program that we have. So the next question says us is that find factorial of a number using the concept of recursion. So what we will do, we'll use the concept of recursion and we will find the factorial of a number. Okay, I have missed question number 2 over here. So, let's do question number 3 in this. And uh, then what we will do, then we will shift to question number 1. Alright. So, what we will do now is, we will go to VS Code. Let's go to VS Code now. So, we are in our VS Code. And here we will do one thing that is find factorial of a number using the concept of recursion. So, before finding factorial, Okay, what is factorial of a number mean? So factorial of a number, what does this mean? Is that it is the product of the number, it is the product up to that number. That is if the factorial of its 5 is said to be found. Okay. If I want to find factorial of 5, so it will be 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. Alright. So what will happen is that in the VS code, let's see now let's define a function called factorial int factorial okay and what this factorial will receive factorial will receive the number whose factorial is to be found int n okay now in a in here we will define the conditions so condition will be like this if n is greater than or equal to 1 okay if n greater than or equal to 1 i'm sorry 1 so we will return like this return we will return what we will return we will return that n into some numbers so what will be the numbers okay so we will write n into m numbers all right else okay now we will write over here else if we are not returning anything we will return 1 okay 
this over here return return one all right so in factorial only this much for this to be done all right now what will happen is we will go to the main function and let's see what we do over there okay i will do a thing over here it will be n minus 1 that is the stopping condition we have to change the n right so like that we have to do the thing and over here what we have to do is we have to accept the value of the number whose number is to be factorial to be found so it will be int n and we will write over here printf int r number okay int r number and we will accept using scanf scanf so it will be percentage d sorry percentage t comma m percent n so this will accept the numbers and over here what we are going to do is we are going to call the function factorial okay so we will call the function factorial over here we will call it in printf factorial is percentage d comma and over here we write factorial and what we are doing we are sending n that is the value of the number only we are sending we are not sending anything by address okay so this was our code okay so let's run it and see if it's working properly or not so here it is saying that our n numbers is not declared so let's declare n numbers okay so instead of declaring n numbers what can we do here is uh, we can call it factorial okay we can call the factorial because we are using recursion huh? so we will call the function and we will get the same answer so this is our code and let's see so it is asking us to enter any number whose factorial is to be found let's be 4 so we are getting factorial is 24 1 into 2 into 3 like this up to 4 if you do the product we will get 24 Let's change the number to 5 now. So we will get 120. So this is the factorial being printed. So this is all about our question number 3. Alright, factorial of a number. Alright, now we will do question number 2 that was to print sum of n natural numbers in C using recursion. Okay. So let's see the question uh, for a timing and this is our question and we are going to do this one. It is question number two print sum of cost and natural number using the concept of recursion. So let's go to VS code. So here in our VS code we have to edit few things. Okay. First in natural number. So what is n over here? N is the you can say the number up to which the sum is to be found. So let's do a thing over here. So what we do is that I will define a function called int add numbers. Okay, so let's change this or let's remove this function. Okay, so let's remove this. And over here, I will write int add. Let's zoom it a bit. Yeah, int add numbers. Okay, and it int add numbers. What we are going to do? We are going to receive the numbers up to which n, up to which we have to add. Okay, and inside this add numbers, I will do that if n is not equal to 0 if n is not equal to 0 let's define the stopping condition n not equal to 0 then what will happen is we will return r e t u r n and what we will return we will return n plus we will add numbers add numbers we will call the function and what we will do this time we will change the parameter to n minus 1 Okay, this is our recursion done. Else, if you write want to write over here, and if you don't want to write over here, the same thing we will write over here. Else, return n. Okay, that is if my number is zero, we will return the number itself. And 
here in the main what we have to do is we have to accept a number and we have to call the function over here so accepting number is done and we will call the number is so you will write over here sum is percentage d and over here we will write the name of the add number function add number okay so this is our code let's run it now So this is our code, it is asking us to enter a number, say 4. So sum of 1, 2, 3 and 4, it's coming 10. If we give it to 6, so it's coming 21. So like this, we are adding two numbers or adding the sum of first in natural numbers up to 6 and up to 4. So this was our question number 2 being solved. Okay, so let's mark this. Okay. Now see. We are going to do the next thing, next question over here. To read the next question here is the question over here. It is asked as we have to print a number of digits using recursion. That is, print the number of digits in a number. You have to count the number of digits present in a digit using the concept of recursion. Okay. So we are now going to see how we use the concept of recursion to count the number of digits. Okay, so for this in the main function we will accept the number as n from the user using scanf, scanf percentage d. Okay, percentage d, and over here we have to write m percent n, which is accepting the number as input. Then over here we have to declare count as a variable to count the number of digits initialized to, to zero. And over here in the Another function will write over here c digits. Okay, and here we are receiving the number, say int num. Okay, and what we are doing over here is we will write if num it is greater than zero, then what we are doing over here is we are doing count plus plus. Okay, and then what we are doing return return num okay num by 10 or let's do a different thing right here num equal to num by 10 and we will return num away just keeping it simple for you to understand you can do it other way also so <coughs> what we are doing over here we are dividing the num itself and we are sending the value to the function a parameter in the form of recursion okay now once there is no digits left further what we will do we will do a uh, part called else uh, from there we will return the count return i'm sorry count done our code is done and we will print it over here print f digits is percentage d and we'll call the function that is c digits c digits okay and uh, over here we will send the parameters and i did a mistake over here that was to call the number call the function itself sorry c digits over here and num will be the parameter to implement recursion so code is done now let's run it and see if it's working properly or not so here it is asking us for the value of any number so let it be four digit number so number of digits is four it is being printed over here okay correctly let's run it again let's give it a bigger number one two three four five six so we are getting digits is six that is it is a six digit number so in this way we implement the concept of recursion and do problem solving like this okay in this we found the number of digits in a number okay so let's see if we have something else after this so that's all for today's lecture see you in the next video where we will discuss a new concept called strings manipulation in c programming okay so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video